Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to all of you, dear friends, brothers, and sisters in Christ. If I were God, I would announce my presence with fireworks and a big neon sign across the sky that said, Worship the Lord. If I were God, I would fill the world with miracles that nobody could deny my glory. Well, I'm not God, obviously, but that's exactly what God has done. The Bible tells us that the skies reveal His glory, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the skies proclaim the work of His hands. And even though I can't pinpoint precisely what I have seen that is a miracle, I have known enough people who have survived things that are unimaginable that I think miracles have certainly occurred in my lifetime. And that thing about filling the sky with the sign, God doesn't need a neon sign because He's got billions of us proclaiming His praise out loud. God reveals His glory through us. And today we want to see specifically that the Lord Jesus reveals His Lordship in the gifts that He gives us. Hear the Word of God through the Apostle Paul in the first epistle to the Corinthians, chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were deceived and somehow led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I am informing you that no one speaking by God's Spirit says, A curse be upon Jesus. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of ministries. I mean, there are various kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of ministries, and yet the same Lord. There are various kinds of activity, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. Each person is given a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one person, a message of wisdom is given by the Spirit. To another, the message of knowledge, as the same Spirit provides it. By the same Spirit, faith is given to someone else. And to another, the same Spirit gives healing gifts. Another is given powers to do miracles, another the gift of prophecy, another the evaluating of spirits, someone else, different kinds of tongues, and another the interpretation of tongues. One and the same Spirit produces all of these, distributing them to each one individually as he desires. This is the word of our God. There are so many different things that declare God's glory, so many different ways that God declares His glory. We look at the sky and we see the stars, the moon, the sun. We see, if we look long enough, supernovas. We see comets, meteors, meteorites hit the ground. We we see thunderstorms, we see the glory of purple mountain majesties, we see the amazing intense power of hurricanes. All of those things declare God's glory when we look through a telescope or the naked eye and we see things that are really big, but God's glory and praise is proclaimed just as loudly if we look through a microscope and we look at the smallest things that exist 
And we note the same order and the same precision and the same beauty and the same purpose from things large to things small, declaring the glory of God, praising the work of His hands. And when we look inside ourselves and look at our bodies and how fearfully and wonderfully we are made, and then we think about our souls and how we will live forever, we see the amazing creation of God. That certainly declares God's glory. We can call them first article gifts because the first article says, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. All of the things that have to do with God's creation are first article. And you know what the second article says? The second article reveals Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. And all of the things that Jesus did for us and for our salvation, from becoming a human being, conceived in His mother Mary by a divine miracle, born, suffered, died for our sins, taking upon Himself the suffering for the guilt that we deserve because of them. And we see Jesus, who was dead in a grave on the third day, rising again. Amazing miracles that provided our salvation, that paid for us to have eternal life. Those are second article truths. But they would not do us very much good if it weren't for the third article truths. I believe in the Holy Spirit. All of the things that the Holy Spirit does are then mentioned in the Creed. He's the one that calls us through the Gospel together to be His church. He's the one who grants faith in our hearts. He's the one who gives us all of the other gifts. Third article truths are also important. And today we want to look at those third article truths. The gifts that God gives us to proclaim the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Our reading started by telling us that when we were pagans, you were deceived and somehow led away to mute idols. I imagine there are a few of us here today that would say that we've been Lutherans our entire life, or at least Christians for our entire life. But I'm going to have to beg to differ. None of us were born as followers of Jesus. None of us were born except as pagans. I remained a pagan for about eight days before I was baptized by my father, who was also our pastor. I didn't start off worshiping Jesus and knowing Him as my Savior. I was facing the wrong way. But God claimed me through the Gospel. He washed my sins away in holy baptism so that I would no longer search after and seek after those mute idols, the ones that don't say anything, certainly don't say anything intelligent. That's the difference between those mute idols and the living God. God does speak. God speaks wisdom and God proclaims grace. The ability to stop abusing Jesus is only given by the Holy Spirit. Some people would pronounce a curse upon Jesus Christ. I know it sounds unreal, but it says, no one speaking by God's Spirit says a curse be upon Jesus. Who would curse Jesus? Well, the fact is that every one of us does that with every sin we commit. With every false word that we speak, with every abusive action that we, that we take. <coughs> Excuse me. With every single bad thought and desire, we curse our Savior. And we would die for those sins 
were it not for the amazing grace of our God and our Savior. Were it not for the Holy Spirit coming into our hearts through that means of grace, so that we can say and mean, we can say and believe, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is my guide, my leader, my protector. Jesus is the one that I follow, the one that I want to follow. He is the one who gives me life eternal. The Holy Spirit gave me that faith, and of course that's the first gift of the Holy Spirit. But so many other things follow. In our reading from verses 4 through 6, it says there are various kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of ministries, and yet the same Lord. There are various kinds of activity, but the same God who produces all of them and everyone. Now, if you're a little bit familiar with Hebrew poetry from the book of Proverbs or elsewhere, Hebrew poetry is, is mainly parallelism, parallel thoughts. Usually there's two of them, where you'll say a phrase and then repeat it by using synonyms. Different words that mean the same thing. Here we have... Three, it says we have, first of all, various kinds of gifts. Then it says there are different kinds of ministries. Then it says there are different kinds of activity. Now this reveals that when we talk about spiritual gifts, we're not talking about things that God has given you that you're going to put up on a shelf or in a china cabinet pretty things for people to look at. But when we have gifts, they are ministries. They're, they're service. They're things that we should do for one another. They're activity. They're not just sitting on a shelf, but we get out there and we do them. And the reason that St. Paul names three synonyms for the gifts is because we have a three-in-one God, and this gives him the opportunity to name the persons of the true God. He says, first of all, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. Very often we say Jesus is Lord, so the second person of the Trinity is called the Lord. And then when we say God, if we mean a specific person of the Trinity, we're talking about the Father. So you see, the entire triune God is involved in giving us all of the blessings that we're going to be talking about today. And these gifts are not meant for display. These gifts are not meant to glorify any of us as individuals. These gifts are meant to help each other and to glorify God. How does this happen? First article, truth, once again. God created us. And the way that he has created us as body and soul, as people with the ability to bring forth children, as male and female, as people who have a divine, who have a soul that will live with God forever, God has created us for this divine purpose, to glorify him. And if we're human beings that do not glorify God, there will always be a hole in our heart that is unfilled. A piece of our soul that is unfulfilled. There will always be a longing for something more. God has set eternity in our hearts. St. Augustine said, our hearts are restless. O oh Lord, until they find their rest in you. God created us to be our best selves when we are working to his glory. And God gives his children, those that he has created faith in their hearts, unique gifts. As I look out among us today, about 20 of us gathered together, I see people with much different personalities. 
and a great diversity of gifts. God did that on purpose. Creating different gifts in different people meets the needs of his church and glorifies him in a way that would not happen if we were all the same. And so Paul mentions that some of us are given the, the, the gift of wisdom, the word of wisdom. The word of wisdom is being able to understand things being able to apply them, being able to take knowledge, and that's listed as the second gift, and being able to answer the question, well, what does this mean and what should we do about it? The third gift that's listed is faith. God has given all of us who believe in Jesus saving faith, but some people God empowers with the gift of faith that is more powerful, that, that is able to see the future, a vision of what things can be. Someone that has confidence, someone that is able to express that confidence to others. There's the gift of healing. In the days of the apostles, this gift of healing was evident. Do you remember when Eutychus fell out of a second-story window because he fell asleep during one of Paul's sermons that got very long? St. Paul went outside and picked him up off the dusty ground and raised him from the dead. That gift of healing miracles was a true gift of God in the New Testament so that God could point people to those who were speaking his word and say, see, this is true. The gifts of miracles were the same. You know, when Jesus turned the water into wine, it's not because he was so concerned that the guests would have something to drink and enjoy the party. It was mostly so that he could testify to his power as God and His grace as the Savior. It was so that people would see Him and the disciples would put their trust in Him. God gave that gift of miracles to some of the apostles in that first century so that their testimony about Jesus would be listened to. And the same thing with the gift of prophecy. God inspired the prophets and the apostles and the evangelists so that they would write down the words of Scripture, but before they wrote them down, they heard them directly from God so that God spoke through them the true words. Sometimes they predicted the future, but more often they simply spoke God's truth. You and I today are not to expect direct communication from God, although God could do that if he wanted to. But God chooses to communicate with us through his word. The Holy Spirit operates through the means of grace so that when we speak the truth contained in God's word, and when we do it accurately, we could say that we are exercising the gift of prophecy. There are also gifts of evaluating spirits, sometimes called discernment. If I would speak something false from this pulpit, I hope there are many among you that have the gift of discernment that would be able to say, that doesn't sound right. And hopefully you would ask for a private conversation with me after the service and ask, did I really hear you right? Did you say? Fill in the blank. The gift of discernment is necessary because there are many instruments and servants of Satan that would like to mislead us that try to worm their way into our fellowship and into our world in order to lead people away from Christ. 
Listening to the prophecy of Scripture and hearing the wisdom of God's people is what protects us against those nefarious spirits. The Apostle talks about the gift of tongues. Some people have a gift to be able to speak in other languages rather easily. I envy those gifts. The gift of tongues was given to the apostles on Pentecost Day. As they were able to speak in the tongues, the languages of people who had come to, to worship God in Jerusalem from all around the civilized world. They were speaking real languages, heard and understood by real people. And then there are also those who can interpret tongues. Those who can understand, those who can discern when true messages and true languages are being discussed. There are many other gifts mentioned in Scripture. The Apostle Paul in the book of Romans talks about leadership and administration, evangelism, teaching, serving, showing mercy, contributing, encouraging, shepherding. I'm sure that those are all well represented in this congregation because God has promised that wherever his gifts are needed, they will be present in Christian congregations. And I don't know you well enough to identify what some of your gifts may be, but as you look around the congregation, you probably know them. You probably can see some who have the gift of wisdom, the gift of leadership, the gift of encouragement, the gift of mercy. Do you know what your gifts are? You know, there is no scripture passage that tells us we need to work to discover our spiritual gifts. But scripture is full of the admonition to use your gifts. We very often don't know what our gifts are until we get out there and start trying to use them. God has told all of us that we are witnesses of the gospel. But you may not know if you have a special gift of evangelism unless you get out there and do it. You may not realize that you have a special gift of encouragement unless you actually get out there and do it. Abiding Savior, Lutheran Church, Winter Texans, those of you who are friends and guests of Abiding Savior, these gifts for God's glory are among you. And on behalf of the Synod, the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod, as a Christian giving counselor, it's my pleasure to come to congregations and visit with individuals to say thank you for sharing those gifts. You've provided congregation mission offerings that have supported the work of training future pastors and teachers and staff ministers and missionaries. You have provided individual offerings for equipping Christian witnesses that I'll talk about during the Bible study hour tomorrow. You've increased your mission offerings each of the last five years in order to provide more blessings to God's people that you are together with in this synod. Praise God. Your pledge for 2022 congregation mission offerings is $11,000. About 40% of that will go to train the next generation of pastors and teachers and other church workers. About 20% of that will be used to send missionaries around the world to places like Africa and China and Thailand, places like South America, places like the Caribbean, and about 20% will be used to send missionaries around the United States. Under God's blessing, we pray that the Lord will enable us in the next 10 years to open 100 new home missions. And this is possible 
because God's Spirit is powerful and gives His gifts to the church and has expressed His will that the gospel of Jesus Christ that proclaims full and free forgiveness to you and to me through His life, death, and resurrection will be proclaimed to the entire world so that they too may join that great company of every tribe, nation, people, and language gathered around the throne of God and singing His glorious songs. Every time we use our gifts, God is glorified. What a joyful thing it is when we find our niche, when we find what it is that God has specially empowered us to do. Whether that is serving, whether that is leading, whether that is showing mercy, you find that activity and it brings joy to you because you know that you're serving the Lord Jesus who has given you everything. And it brings joy to others. And it brings joy to angels who are dancing to know that more people have learned about the Savior, and more people will receive that beautiful gift of faith and eternal life. Those who love Jesus because He loved us first have that great joy of participating in God's work. You know, God would not have had to involve us in His work. I love this picture that occurred to me some years ago when when my children were very small and they wanted to participate in getting ready for guests. I don't remember, we had, we had some dignitary like the in-laws or something was coming over and we wanted to get everything swept and cleaned up and the little kids wanted to help. But when they swept, they made more of a mess when they dusted, they just made things fall down and get disorganized. And yet, they loved the activity. And as they grew up, they got better at doing those things. And that's where we are. We're like those little children. And God has told us that we should use our gifts to serve Him. Maybe we don't do so good right now. But God is training us, God is building us, God is maturing us so that we can truly make a difference in this world. As we apply that good news of Jesus, that good news is powerful and that good, that good news does bring joy. And I pray that you too will know this joy. Amen.